Hi students, welcome to the Advanced Placement or AP webinar for VSCA for the year of 2020-2021. We are super excited to kick off another great year of rigorous learning and wanna ensure that you and your families are in the know and well prepared for what's to come so that we can work together for your success. During this time, we're gonna share a little bit about our AP program as well as specifics about the AP courses that we'll be offering next year. And we'll close out with some opportunities to follow up with questions and next steps for you and your family to do in preparation. We're going to be welcoming a few of us um, to share information with you. And as we are new to producing our own television webinar shows, I apologize in advance for any technical glitches and appreciate your grace um, as we move forward. All right, so our objectives for our time together are as follows. BISCA students will understand and commit to the expectations, habits, and mindsets required to be successful in AP courses. Learn from AP teachers about AP courses and summer homework assignments. And all of this will be measured by your um, signing of the AP student and family agreement. So our agenda for our time together during this webinar, um, we're gonna start off, the first section is all about um, considerations for taking an AP course. We're also gonna be discussing the differences between AP courses at BISCA and courses that may be offered through Los Angeles Southwest College. Um, we'll be talking about whether or not um, AP courses are right for you. Um, and then our wonderful AP teachers are gonna be providing a brief description as Mr. Garris mentioned on each of their courses, including expectations for summer homework. And last but not least, we'll be finishing out with some discussion around the student and family agreement and next steps around how to best prepare for your AP courses this up upcoming year um, and our summer school offerings. So you might be wondering why would you want to take an AP course uh, and sign up for extra work? There's a lot of great benefits that come from AP courses and passing AP exams, including strengthening your college application, earning credit um, or advanced placement into more advanced courses. Um, and if you're able to do that, it often will save you time and money in college um, so that you have a little bit of extra cash to stash in your wallet. Uh, as a reminder, just taking the course alone is not enough to earn credit. You also need to take and pass the AP exam. And depending on which higher education institution you attend after high school will depend on how much credit you receive, um, depending on which courses you take and the scores that you receive. Um, so all those details you'll need to make sure you coordinate with your institution. As you know, we also offer dual enrollment courses through Los Angeles Southwest College. These provide many of the same benefits around college credit, but are a little bit different. So we want to point out um, that both courses are taught in BISCA classrooms. AP courses are taught by our wonderful BISCA teachers, whereas dual enrollment courses are taught by also wonderful Los Angeles Southwest College professors. The AP classes require that you take and pass the AP exam, whereas the dual enrollment courses do not have an exam, but you have to pass the actual class in order to earn your credit. And the dual enrollment courses, um, when taken over a number of years, you can use to complete the IGETSI curriculum and uh, be ready for transfer as you leave high school. Um, some of this, the courses that we have scheduled for AP courses might actually be offered through dual enrollment. Um, so if that's the case and applies to you, we'll be sharing those details forthcoming, uh, but the content would be very similar. Um, so please stay tuned for more information 
as we finalize our, our plans and our agreements with the college for next year. Good morning, everyone. So you may be wondering, is an AP course right for me? Um, definitely with the right preparation and choices, all students can be successful in an AP course. You know, we have many subjects, Spanish, history, English, various subjects. So um, you can be successful, but there are some foundational habits that are going to be required of you to be successful. The first is reflection and collaboration with counselors and family to choose an appropriate course. So this, of course, placement. So this includes not just during the course registration time, not just when you're thinking about the summer work that you have to complete in the summer, but this also includes speaking with your counselor and family at the beginning of the semester that your class starts to ensure that you can be successful. And, and if there needs to be a change of course, doing that as quickly as possible to ensure that you have a space in the following course or the next course that you wanna to transition to. But I can't, cannot highlight enough communication it requires constant communication, even going into first semester and finishing first semester, communicating with your family and teachers. Is this something that you can manage um, and be successful in? Next is a daily attendance and engagement in learning activities. It's expected that you're participating, that you're engaging in classroom, that you are checking in with your teacher, um, learning and really a part of an AP course is the critical thinking and the analysis and breaking down of details and that's what's expected of you in the course. Uh, next is self-control and self-discipline. This includes managing stress. This includes managing um, how you engage with your peers in the classroom. This uh, includes how you structure yourself. We're going to get to time management in a, in a minute, but it's really you are preparing for college. And those are key factors in how you are successful as a college student. Next is strong independent learning skills to engage in learning outside of class. You may be expected to read chapters prior to coming into class and be prepared to converse about those things when you get into the classroom you may have to practice topics and concepts before you get into the room so being ahead of uh being staying on track with your study schedule staying track of your staying on track with your um, assignment schedule is important next time management that connects to the previous point assignments are completed on time do not expect or think that turning in late work is an option. Um, you are expected to get your assignments in when they are due, and it, it requires time management, knowing that if you have a project due in three weeks, what you need to do to backwards plan to get it done on time when it's due. Lastly is adhering to required and taking advantage of voluntary additional supports. So the expectation is that if you enroll in an AP course, you're expected to take the AP exam. So what is it that you need to do and be involved in to be prepared for taking the AP exam, which will include going to talk to your teachers when there's tutoring times, completing your Saturday classes, talking to your family about how you're going to get to your Saturday classes via bus or car, making sure to take the initiative and in, in getting ahead of those things so you can uh, be prepared for your class and uh, when it's time to take the AP exam. All right, now we're going to learn a little bit more about each of the courses. I will turn it over to start with AP US History and Ms. Kim. Hi, good morning. My name is Ms. Kim and I'll be teaching AP US History. So this course is actually a survey of the entire US history, which focuses on from early Native American civilization to present times up to the election of President Donald Trump. And the content for the course is divided into two parts and during the first semester and fall semester we'll be focusing from the beginning to the gilded age and from the second semester it begins with the gilded age foreign policy and imperialism to the 21st uh, century history and while doing this although the class is very quickly paced students are expected to understand the political economic social and cultural history with the emphasis on how things have changed and made an impact on our history. Since this is a college level course, there's a lot of reading required for this class, meaning students must come to class prepared from the reading. 
and they're also expected to take a lot of reading classes, complete writing assignments, participate in our class discussions, um, take a lot of notes, learn to do some simulations, watch films, but they should also expect to prepare themselves for the exam, which is a set of multiple choice, document-based questions, short responses, and long essay responses. Students should technically expect to spend about an hour each evening to complete their homework. Um, every Friday, they should expect some sort of early bird session. They should also be prepared for review sessions during spring semester, which basically is them coming in every couple Saturdays to complete their mock exams. And for their summer packet, students are expected to read and answer the work for four chapters of their textbook, which is important because it covers the first period of our course. And if students need any help, I'm available for office hours and tutoring during lunch and after school. Hello, I'm Mr. Lee Poser, and I'll be teaching AP Calculus AB, uh, and we designated AB because it's the first semester of calculus in a college course. Uh, and in this course, surprisingly, it's only three main topics, although each topic is fairly comprehensive. There's limits. We start out with the topic of limits, and then it leads us into differentiation and finally into integration. And because of calculus, we have all of these new technological advances that were possible, as well as something that's building bridges or traveling to the moon, and even to predict patterns of population change. And in this course, you'll definitely be working in a collaborative setting, usually with uh, three or four other students in your group, uh, doing uh, different activities, uh, taking notes, analyzing each other's work, uh, and commenting and critiquing, uh, as well as problem solving. So to be successful in this class, you need to participate in class lectures, uh, work in groups as we talked about, and we will be uh, completing activities and solving real world problems. You can expect homework uh, assigned almost every day with the exception of review days and assessment days. Uh, I offer morning and lunch tutoring. And in the summer, you do uh, have to work on a packet which reviews all of the concepts from algebra through pre-calculus and trig, uh, especially the trig part uh, is important because you see that quite a bit in calculus and uh, it's worth 100 points on the first day of school. And that is AP Calculus in a nutshell. Thanks. Hello, my name is Mr. Moreno uh, and I'll be teaching AP Psychology. And the course is basically an introductory course, a college level introductory course. So we go over the basics of psychology. What is it? How did it develop as a discipline? Um, who are major figures in the field? Um, and then what are the most famous experiments and what have you learned from them? So the course spans a total of nine units, um, all of those covering exactly what I said. So the content is important because I think it does a really good job of get, giving you a better understanding of why you think the way you do or why you react the way you do in certain uh, situations and hopefully that's the biggest thing you take away from the course. I think that's what makes it exciting. You're getting a better understanding of yourself and hopefully those around you, but mostly I tell students to think about themselves first before they start using psychology and other people. So for homework, what you can expect, uh, we're doing two to three hours of reading every week. We use two books, uh, the textbook, which is the Myers for AP, and then the prep book through Barron's. And they coincide and sometimes information overlaps and sometimes they're talking about very different things. So it's required that both those books are being read. Um, and every week we're going to be doing this as we are moving quickly. As I noted, there are nine units in total. Um, so that's a lot of um, content to cover and we don't go the whole um, school year as other courses do. Our test is in May, so that cuts us about a month short. So we're moving in a slightly faster pace. Um, lastly, for your supports, um, I do tutoring um, during lunch, after school, um, and then also we will be doing tests on Saturdays. Every two to three months we'll be doing like unit wrap-ups. 
Um, and lastly, for the summer, there is a code there, which you can make a Schoology account. And there are some summer readings uh, spanning the different units, the really basic stuff. You can um, look at an article, kind of reflect on the questions that I have for you, and then just turn the work through there. For AP Human Geography, I also teach the course. Um, this is one of my favorite courses because it's so modern. Um, oftentimes, uh, we're looking at articles that just got printed either uh, in the New Yorker, in Times, it just the content is incredibly um, flexible to being very new. So in essence, what we look at is how do cultures, uh, development and different countries all clash together and how does that affect the world that we live in. Um, this uh, course is a total of seven units. Um, which allows us a bit more flexibility in terms of time. Uh, psychology runs a little bit faster. Uh, human geo is also fast, but not as fast. Um, and again, we cover all kinds of isms. It's in essence sociology 101. That's an introductory course in college and allows us a better understanding again of how cultures and religions mesh or don't sometimes depending on different parts of the world we'll be looking at. Um, yeah. Very much like AP Psych, we're looking at two to three hours of reading every week because we use two books. We use the cultural landscape book for um, our main uh, part of the content and then the prep book to kind of help us out with some of the things that the book doesn't cover because the course uses three different books and teachers kind of have to choose uh, which one they think does the best job. So this is going to happen every week and again we're I think the first week or second week of the AP test we tend to be, so that cuts us uh, a little bit short. Um, just like AP Psych, there is a code there in the bottom. You can make a Schoology account and your summer readings are there. And that one, I gave you one reading per unit to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about. Good morning, I'm Ms. O, and I'll be teaching AP U.S. Government. Um, AP U.S. Government and Politics is a study of the structure and the functions of the U.S. Government. Um, with the primary sources and landmark Supreme Court cases, um, you'll be looking at the foundations of government as well as the interactions of the different branches of the U.S. Government. Furthermore, the course um, introduces us to the concepts of civil liberties, civil rights, political ideologies, and participation that direct, direct, I'm sorry, directly impact our lives and the roles we play in policy making. Um, this is essentially a flipped classroom, meaning that you are expected to come <laughs> to class prepared, um, meaning that you have read the assignments or the assigned readings and the homework, um, and you're ready to actively contribute to class discussions and debates. Um, for homework, um, it will be daily, and this includes the chapter readings. And we have about 18 chapters to get through before um, the month of May, so it will be pretty fast. Um, for additional supports, um, tutoring and office hours will be held during lunch on Wednesdays. And for the homework over the summer, um, you are to look at the U.S. Bill of Rights, which is the first 10 amendments, and study them and memorize them, as well as this, uh, the landmark 15 um, Supreme Court cases. And you will be quizzed when you come back uh, the first day of school. Hi everyone, um, for AP Spanish language, uh, this course is dedicated for you to make you a competent um, and confident reader and writer in the Spanish language. Most importantly, um, it embodies all the skills. So for example, you are gonna be required to read, write, listen, and speak in formal Spanish. Um, in this class, well, this, is, this AP exam is known to be um, the longest AP exam just because it entails all these components, but we use um, the class to be able to practice for this. So you're going to be required to present in front of the class. You're going to be required to engage in um, short conversations in your groups. You're going to be required to read. 
um, in the Spanish language, both fiction and nonfiction texts, um, and a lot of writing as well. Um, the exam consists of two tasks, speaking, two writing tasks, uh, various listening comprehension and reading comprehension. So it's a pretty lengthy test, um, but nonetheless, um, I think you are more than capable of taking this class. Uh, ideally, it would be a class to be, to be taken after Spanish 3, but if you're currently in Spanish 2 um, and you have an A or B and your teacher recommends for you to take AP Spanish language, you're more than welcome um, to take it as well. Um, during this class is going to be requiring homework at least three times a week. Um, no, go back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, summer homework is going to consist of reading a play and writing an analysis paper. Just to give uh, your teacher, will, will be myself, um, some time to see where you stand in your writing. Um, okay, next one. Thank you. Uh, AP Spanish literature is a more complex class. So for this class, you are required to have already taken AP Spanish language because that's where um, it makes your, your strong skills in Spanish literature. We don't focus on grammar anymore. You should be able to write professionally um, in Spanish, in formal Spanish. AP Spanish literature requires a lot of reading and writing. There is a list of 38 works um, that you're required to read. Um, the good thing is that we read some of those works in AP Spanish language to alleviate some of that. Um, but the works include poems, um, novels, plays, short stories. So it's a combination of everything. And it, it's literally works from like the 15th century all the way to um, modern times. Um, this class is similarly structured like your English literature class, that only that you are um, doing the reading and the writing in Spanish. Uh, for AP Spanish literature, because it's such a dense class, there's so much reading that we need to get done. There will be homework daily. Um, some additional support is obviously we have tutoring during lunch and our after school, and we are going to be required to come a couple of Saturdays for some mock exams. Um, and the summer homework is also going to include reading one of the assigned readings from the list uh, and writing a literary analysis of three to four pages. And that's, that's all. Dear students, I'd like to talk about AP Physics 1. It is an algebra-based course in general physics, which is equivalent to one semester credit in the university. So if you intend to study any program in the College of Science and Engineering, this class will serve as a prerequisite to calculus-based physics classes in mechanics, electricity, and magnetism. Here, you will develop a solid understanding of fundamental scientific principles and theories of general physics, both conceptual understanding and the ability to solve problems in mechanics, waves, and electricity, by doing in-class activities and inquiry-based lab that involve critical observations, rigorous investigations, and accurate data collection and analysis. Next slide, please. To be successful in AP Physics 1, you are expected to complete geometry or you're currently taking Algebra 2. Enrolling in a trigonometry class is helpful because you will apply the basic use of trigonometric functions in your calculations. Aside from your proficiency in solving physics problems, you will enhance your scientific literacy by writing 20 lab reports where you will develop logical explanations and presentation of results or findings. Lastly, summer assignments include a review of your prerequisite knowledge in the following, scientific or dimensional analysis, geometry, trigonometry, algebra, graphing, functions, scalars, and vectors. Thank you for listening.
right. So you're ready to commit for the AP course. Awesome. So the next steps that you will take as a student, you guys will send, uh, sign the AP agreement that will be sent out May 18th via Student Square and Parent Square. Um, after you have signed it, please review it with your, uh, your guardian. Um, they would also uh, be receiving the AP agreement. So um, we'll ask for them to sit, sign it as well. So that way they understand the expectations um, that comes with uh, taking an AP course and uh, the dedication that you'll need for the whole school year to be successful in that class. Uh, please continue to do your best in the spring of 2020. Uh, we understand that distance learning does provide some challenges, but if you establish good habits and organization skills, you will be preparing yourself uh, for this AP course coming into the fall of 2020. Um, if you are a student who did sign up or uh, is requesting an AP course and have a GPA below a 3.0 or uh, have received a B, below a B minus in that prerequisite course, your counselor will make contact with you in the next coming weeks um, just to uh, schedule a conversation uh, with you and your family uh, about uh, making an informed decision whether this course would be uh, best suited for you and your best academic interests um, and just to prepare you for what is to come in the AP course. Hello everyone, this is Ms. Gonzalez. I'm one of your BISCA counselors and you've been hearing from some of the AP teachers and potentially some of your future teachers about some of their courses and what it will take to be successful in those courses. And you've been hearing a lot of reading, note taking, writing, and sometimes you're taking more than just one AP class and if you're not, you're having to balance it with another five courses. So it's really important for you to think through what are those skills that you're gonna need and we are going to be able to offer an AP prep course in the summer um, that will focus on skim reading. I know every single class that you just heard about was ta we're talking about reading and a lot of times hundreds of pages of reading. Um, so learning how to skim read, note taking, vocab, we've been hearing a lot of vocab that maybe we don't understand yet. And so knowing that is gonna be really important those are just a few, uh, few skills that you'll have to be focusing on to be successful, not only for AP classes, but also when you go off to college. Those are going to help you um, just get through it. And so this summer course will be offered um, from July 6th through July 31st. It will be distance learning, just like we have right now. And it will be taught by our own um, Mr. Moreno. So if you're interested in signing up, uh, please talk to one of your counselors. Also know that we need to work together and we can't do this all by ourselves. So ask for help and this is a way to get started. Students, we are so grateful for your time and interest in learning about AP courses for next school year. If you have any questions or concerns or clarifications, um, even though we are physically distant, we are always here to support and help you. Um, our next opportunity to talk specifically about AP courses will be on Wednesday, May 20th at 2 p.m. We will have a live question and answer session. So if you have a question about AP courses, please tune in then. Or if you want to just tune in and learn from the questions that others are asking, everybody is welcome to join that time. If that doesn't work for you or you have other personal or individual circumstances to discuss, uh, please check with your counselor, attend their office hours, contact us via email, phone, text, Instagram. We're not yet on Snapchat, um, but we are here to help you and are just so inspired by your perseverance during this difficult time of distance learning and really excited about what our future holds and knows that we know that it'll be bright um, and really appreciate your time not only now but in the future is AP courses, you heard, require a lot of work, um, not just on your part, but the teachers as well. And so by working together, we can make sure uh, that we are best prepared for success in our futures in higher education. So we look forward to seeing you online sometime soon. And thank you for your time.